What is up everyone? Bruno is here for another recap of BB Can 6. We're now at week 8 and it was the triple eviction. Uh, pretty big week in terms of the show. You know, everyone was kind of looking to this moment. Everyone was kind of expecting this moment in the house. Um, a lot to talk about. Uh, as you can see behind me, my backdrop, I have changed it up a little bit. I'm in my man cave here. And on my left, I have all my big brother memorabilia from season 3. And again, from season 5. And on my right, I have some of the art that I've collected uh, going to different Comic Cons uh, over the years. Um, pretty neat stuff. I also want to give a huge, huge, huge shout out to FI Collection. You guys are amazing. Uh, you can check them out at fiCollection.com. They've hooked me up with some hats. Uh, lots of amazing hats. We got Roma. We got Juventus, my team. Juventus, FC Porto. I mean, you name it. These guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, check it out. Great, great place. FICollection.com. Check it out. That being said, guys, let's get to it. So today it looks like I have my little sidekick with me. This is Bowser, everybody. This is my little guy, Bowser. So, I guess not. All right, so now we're going to get into the HOH competition. Um, it's an endurance comp. They have to hold on to some rope or whatever. Now, rumor has it that they actually got breaks uh, in between, which is kind of weird uh, for an endurance comp to have breaks and be able to rest your arms and all that stuff. Whatever, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Um, and then you see some jelly and stuff. They pour some like liquid down. Uh, you can tell it's it's very narrow. It's, it literally falls between their legs. No big deal. So it's kind of your own fault if you step in it. The trick in these competitions, okay? So future house guests, anytime they put any liquid in a competition, if you're holding on to something tight and you're just kind of holding yourself off, up, and they and they put a liquid into the competition, the minute you move your hands or your feet, you are screwed. Once that liquid gets underneath your hands or your feet, you're done. Um, so the trick with these is get comfortable and stay there. Once your feet move, you're done. So anyway, the competition comes down to Paris and Johnny. Paris looks like she's killing it. Uh, they make some kind of deal. Johnny wins. Johnny is your new HOH for the week. So Kayla and Derek tell Johnny how when they were HOH last week, everyone was throwing Johnny under the bus and was trying to get them to nominate him. So they're right. And they're also right how Kayla's saying, you know, we're going up regardless. We have to fight. So I respect that about her. I, I really respect that she has no quit in her. She has fight in her. And, you know, she's not going out without swinging. So, you know, uh, Kayla's telling Johnny all this stuff about how they wanted to, they told him to put uh, Johnny up last week when they were HOH. And Johnny says, do you, do you want to tell them that? She says, I will tell them to their face. He says, well, let's do it. And another house meeting comes. So they get everyone together. And Kayla's saying her piece. She's saying, yeah, you guys all told me to put Johnny up, throw another bus. And here's how the season's been going. Whoever wins HOH, you have all these people floating in the middle, which makes for a boring, boring, boring season. You have all these people floating in the middle. Whoever gets power, they shift that way. The other side wins power, they shift that way. And there's only a few people really playing when there's four or five people that are just safe. It's kind of boring, it sucks. Um, and it's just their word against theirs. But the problem is, is all the people in the middle are working together so they can all back each other up and kind of support each other uh, with their lies. Um, it's just, it works, but it's boring. Works, decent gameplay, but it's boring. So anyway, Johnny does decide to put Derek and Kayla up on the block. Um, you know, rightfully so. They should have been the target. I said it last week when they were HOH. They got to get Johnny out because it doesn't matter who wins. They're going on the block. Uh, Derek and Kayla are going on the block regardless. So make the shot count. Why get out someone like Ryan when you can get out someone like Johnny? And who wins HOH the following week? Johnny. Who goes on the block? Derek and Kayla. So um, it was no surprise to who was going on the block. Um, and let's see what happens with the veto. So Johnny uh, also puts Derek and Kayla on slop, which is the right move. Whenever you're targeting someone in the house, guys, you put them on slop. You don't want them to have energy. You don't want them to be able to compete. You don't want them to be able to think. When you're hungry in there, it's the environment is so intensified that it's just everything is just so magnified bigger than it is. When you're hungry, just a little bit, you're really, really hungry. When you're drained, you're just completely drained. It's Things are so different in the house and it's something you can't explain. You just have to live through it and feel it for yourself to completely understand it. Uh, slop is no joke. It is, um, it is really, it does drain people and just destroys their games. So Johnny wants Derek and Kayla out, puts them both on slop, the right move, uh, because he doesn't want them to be able to compete in the veto. It'll weaken them for the veto, uh, give you know Johnny and whoever else a better chance to win, keep the nominations the same, and that's that. So Derek and Kayla are on slop. 
they're nominated, things aren't looking good, and now we go to the veto. So the veto competition is a memory based one. It's, you know, they're asking like how many competitions did Erica play in or put up the competitions that whatever, Hamza played in, whatever it is. Now to the audience that might seem really, really hard. It's like, oh man, how can they remember this? But I promise you something, in that house, these competitions are a joke. They're so easy to remember. I still remember everything from week one all the way to week uh, eight in uh, Big Brother Canada 3 that I played in. And again in Big Brother Canada 5. You remember these things because you have nothing else to do in that house but to memorize and study. So I've, I've said it in my how to play Big Brother video. If you guys haven't watched it, you have to watch it, if, especially if you plan on playing. It breaks down things you need to do in the house and studying is, is, is literally number one. That's something you have to do every single day. You have to break down your day. Day one, this happened, this happened, this happened. Day two, this happened. And every single day, you just keep bringing it up every day in your head. You go through it every day in your head. Day one, day two, day three. Day one, day two, day three, day four. All the way up to the end. And every single day, you keep studying. And when you get a competition like this, it's so burned into your brain that these answers are so easy. I can literally, if I had a competition like that today about Big Brother Canada 3, I could do it like this. I memorized the weeks. It's just the way it is. You have nothing else to do in that house. So I was surprised that these players had such a hard time with some of these questions. They should have instantly been able to run back and forth and just get it done. So that really, really, really surprised me because that was an easy, easy, easy competition uh, to win. And again, like I said, if you're at home, it's, you know, you don't remember, you're like, oh, what was that week one or five or six? Because you have a life and you have other things you're doing. You go to work, you do whatever you got to do. These people are in that environment every day. And the best way to break it down is week by week. Like, okay, uh, Erica went out in whatever week, I don't know what it was, five or whatever. So you know that she only played in the first five vetoes, whatever. There's so, so many ways to break it down now that this competition should have been a joke for them so anyway Derek wins uh veto good for him it really spices things up changes the week completely because he was the target and he was going home so i like to see that he won um you know it just brings something to the table if johnny would have won or someone else would have won whatever another boring week Derek goes home very expected uh blah 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 so i like the fact that uh that Derek won so now we're going to go into the replacement nominee. So Johnny puts Alejandro on the block as a replacement. Okay, I get it. Uh, you know, he's trying not to get too much blood on his hands. Uh, he still thinks Kayla's going to go home, blah, blah, blah. But this is big brother, guys. I've said this so many times. The HOH has no power once those nominations are up. So you have to make sure they count. The HOH puts them on the block. The house votes them out. So especially when an HOH is very, very vocal of who they want to go home, it can work against them because the house knows their target, especially Johnny. I got to say, I think Johnny had a horrible week. I think his HOH was a disaster. I think he had really good weeks leading up to this, but once he was HOH, just a complete, complete disaster. I don't think he was very, his strategic game threw it out the window. He was trying to be so dramatic and trying to put on a show, you know, busting in rooms, busting up conversations. He's not playing smart. You know, he, he got to this point by playing smart and then he finally gets to HOH. It completely gets to his head. Um, you know, I think he felt like he was the best player in the house, which he probably was. But when you start believing your own hype, especially when you're in there in the mix of it, it could be very, very, very dangerous. So I think he uh, he played this week just completely, completely, completely wrong. Uh, like I said, just no strategic game at all. He had it up going up to this week, but once he got finally to HOH, threw it out the window. Anyway, so he puts Alejandro up on the block. Um, thinking Kayla is going to go home. Again, this is Big Brother, guys. Everyone knows that Johnny wants Kayla out. Everyone knows there's a triple coming up. I don't know if they kind of kind of clue, you know, led them on in, in the diary room. Because that's the thing, in the diary room, they gotta ask the questions. So I don't know if they asked the certain questions that made them like, oh man, the, the triple's gotta be coming up. Did they ask them, oh, are you scared of a triple? You, we don't know what they're asked in the diary room. But they were obviously led on to know that there was a triple uh, eviction. So they knew it was coming. So here's the thing, okay? When Johnny's so vocal about how he, he wants Derek and Kayla out and this and that, and the house knows a triple is around the corner and it has to be now. It can't be in week nine. It has to be week eight at this point. So they kind of know it's coming now. 
why would he be so vocal about how he wants Derek and Kayla out? Oh, screw them. He thinks they're already out the door. So that's the problem is he's overplayed himself. He already thinks Derek or Kayla is out the door. So he's talking trash to them. He doesn't care. Well, the house is listening. The house is listening. The players are listening. And they're going, hey, you know, obviously, if Johnny, if, if Kayla stays next week, she's going to put Johnny up on the block. Uh, Ali and Olivia are obviously against them because they're now paired against each other on the block. Alejandra's on the block and Kayla's on the block. So Olivia's obviously against them. And it just, it eased, it made it so easy for the house to say, hey guys, let's keep Kayla. Uh, she'll put out Johnny and uh, Olivia on the triple for sure because they're so vocal about how they want to get them out. And it was just a joke. For me, it was a joke. I thought this whole triple was a joke because it was so obvious it was going to happen. But here's the thing. I think the house actually made a mistake um, by keeping... Uh, Kayla over Alejandra. Here's the thing, okay? Nobody can win competitions in this house. Nobody can win competitions. I think Johnny did it to himself to make the house want to keep Kayla because he was so vocal about how he wants them out and this and that. So it's Johnny's fault, I believe, that Kayla stayed in the house and Alejandra went home. Now, the house definitely screwed up. Look, Kayla, Johnny, and Derek are the only three people that can win anything in this house. And I don't care what any of these house guests tell you that they're throwing competitions. They're not. They're trying. They're just that bad at them. I'm telling you they are that bad at the competitions that they just cannot win. Um, so all you have left in the house is Johnny, Kayla, and Derek that can win competitions. Well, Kayla's on the block. This is a perfect opportunity. And she's a monster. I give her so much credit. She is an absolute monster in these competitions. So um, I give her a ton of credit. This was their shot to get them out, break up Derek and Kayla. Derek is going to be kind of useless on his own, you know, as, as nice as the guy is and everything. Uh, playing Big Brother by himself, he doesn't stand a chance. So I think they, the house made a huge mistake getting rid of Alejandro this week. Um, because what has she done? Like, really, what has she done? Um, so they do vote out Alejandra. I believe it was four to one. And now we're going to get into the triple. Now, I want before I start talking about the triple, I just want to say, uh, you know, it brings back a lot of memories for me. Big Brother Canada 3 was the first ever triple eviction, uh, which I was a big part of. So uh, Brittany, won actually, so we had the HOH competition. We didn't know it was a triple yet. It was an HOH competition. We figured it was a double, uh, whatever. We, we had no idea. We, no one even heard, no one even heard of a triple yet by this point. It didn't even exist. So, you know, we just, we don't think anything of it. We do the HOH competition. Brittany wins. Brittany gets all six questions right. I get five questions right. So she beats me by one question, puts up Zach, Kevin, and Peely, the three people I've wanted out of the house for weeks. Um, but then I'm thinking to myself, you know, who's next in line when these people go? And that would have been me. So we go up to the veto. I win the veto. Awesome veto. Still my favorite competition to this day. Uh, amazing. Uh, I win the veto. I save Zach, as some of you might remember. Uh, to this day, I still believe is the best move I ever did um, in any season I played. That was my favorite and best, best, best move. Saving Zach is just unfortunate with the twist that came after it uh, because I truly believe if that twist wasn't there the following week, I mean, who knows, but the game would have been completely different whatever anyway so this triple is exciting for me simply because i've been a part of it before and i've been a big part of it before so it's really neat to see so uh anyway so let's get to the triple and so they just vote out alejandra uh johnny gets up starts chirping everyone olivia starts chirping them this is right before the triple this is ridiculous to me guys you got johnny especially knows that he can't play. Keep your mouth shut. Maybe try to work some magic. Who knows? Maybe he feels like he's out anyway. Then why do... If he felt like he was defeated before this competition even started, then why do the nominations you did the week before? It just goes to show how horrible his week was. Anyway, so Johnny and Olivia start chirping everyone right before the competition. Of course, who wins? Derek. Derek wins. They know they're going on the block. They're playing off like, oh, well, haha, this is funny. It's not funny. You guys are crushed. Um... But just, I just felt like the, the way they handled the way they played it was horrible. Um, and anyway, so we get into the veto. Uh, they had to like spin around and take some names off. I didn't really pay attention to what the, the object was. They had to put the names on a board. The, the, the bridge drops. 
and the veto's there. Kayla wins. I'm telling you guys, she's a monster. So you have Derek and Kayla winning all these competitions in the last couple of weeks. They're just winning everything. The other three or four people in this house can't win anything. So it's going to be interesting to see how the next couple of weeks play because I don't see anybody left in that house that can actually beat these guys in any competition. So I have a feeling they're going to win out and just literally control the game. When you have those three people in the middle that think they're controlling the game, which they're really controlling nothing because they've done nothing. So uh, Maddie is everyone's final two. Uh, sorry to say, Maddie, I know you're from Ottawa. I've been trying to cheer for you all year, but you've done nothing, absolutely nothing, uh, literally nothing in this game. It's a shame. Uh, she's playing like a Victoria game of Big Brother 16. Uh, anyway. So um, Kayla wins the veto, keeps noms the same. Now here's something that's really, really interesting, okay? Um, on season three in the triple, I used the veto on Zach. In season five in the triple, Kevin used the veto on himself. And in season six in the triple, Kayla wins the veto and doesn't use it. So there's been three different, um, three different scenarios with that veto every single time. So it's been literally used a different way each triple, which is kind of neat, you know? Um, it is kind of neat. Now, here's the other thing too. On season three, Brittany was the HOH going into the triple and she got to play in the competition. Um, and I noticed, I guess on season five and on this season, the HOH doesn't get to play in the triple veto, which is kind of weird in a way because every HOH automatically plays in uh, the veto competitions during their week. But I, I understand why the show does it. And I, I don't know for sure, but, I, but what I believe is they do it because if the HOH wins the veto, there's no drama, there's no excitement. Um, because obviously they're going to keep the nominations the same. So by doing this, it eliminates one person that would just keep the nominations the same. And it makes it for, uh, you know, a bigger reaction because, you know, if someone, it makes it so that the veto, there's a bigger chance that the veto can be used. Um, so I get why production does it. I don't think they should. I think it's just if, if the HOH wins, they should be playing in the veto, whatever. Uh, but that's the way it goes. So Kayla wins the veto, keeps it the same. And guess who stays? Maddie, everyone's favorite final two. Um, she's playing the best $20,000 game she has all year. Um, so Johnny and Olivia go. So tonight in the triple, we lose Alejandra, Olivia, and Johnny, which leaves nobody in the house. So this final five is pretty disappointing. I think uh, a lot of people are disappointed with this final five. Uh, it's going to basically be three against two. But these three people can't win. Here's the problem. You got three people against two. But in reality, it's two against nothing because these two people are going to win HOH. They're going to win vetoes. They're going to win back and forth. They're going to win out. These guys, the three people can't win anything. Maddie, Paris, Will haven't done anything all season. Literally haven't done anything. So um, I think it's, uh, I, I believe Kayla's going to win HOH this following week. She's going to put these two people up. They're going to crumble. They're all going to rat on each other and break each other's games down and tell Kayla and Derek everything. They're going to be able to make some deals. And one of those three people will be going home this week. Okay, so I just want to say at this point, I'm actually kind of cheering for Kayla. I think she's had the hardest road to the end. Um, simply because she's been a have-not for five weeks out of eight. Trust me, I know what that's like. It's not fun. Um... It's hard. It's hard to play in there when you're on slop. She's been a target because she's been in, in a showman's. Usually I don't cheer for the showman's, but you know what? She deserves it. She's had a really hard path to get to where she is today. She survived the block uh, against Alejandra this late in the game, uh, being a target for so many weeks um, and all that. I think she has no quit in her. She fights. I like that. And uh, I just, I re I'm respecting your game. I, di I didn't think much of it, uh, you know, in the first five, six weeks. But the last two, three weeks, you know, she's really grown on me. And um, I'm kind of respecting her game. Here's the thing, too. Again, I'm only watching the edited show. I don't know what really goes on on the, on the feeds and all that. I'm just seeing what they're showing on the TV. Uh, but, yeah, I am respecting her game and I'm liking it a lot. So, um, at this point, Derek or Kayla winning, I'm okay with that. Um simply because they've had the hardest path and they've been the targets and they're really coming out these last few weeks and just winning out and doing what they have to do. You know, Kevin did it in season five, uh, the last half he won out and it looks like they're going to do the same. So good on them. And I I'd like to see one of them win big brother Canada six. Okay guys, there you have it. That's week eight of big brother Canada six. This is the week that I went out on season three. Um, by that twist, 
So I know what it's like to get this far in the game and go home. Uh, or go to jury anyway. So the jury house is going to be interesting this week. You get Ryan, he's there all by himself. Next thing you know, Ali's going to come in. And then Johnny and Olivia. So uh, it'll go from an empty house to a pretty full house. Uh, just like that. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoy these recaps. Uh, there's only a couple weeks left. And then I'm done for Big Brother Canada this season. Um, I'm thinking of doing the American version when it comes out. I'm not too sure yet. You know, it is time consuming and everything. Uh, but let's see. Anyway, hit that sub button. Hit that like button. Leave comments. I know I kind of went through, I talked just mostly about the triple and kind of skimmed over a few other things. But leave some comments. Tell me what you think of what else happened this week that I might have missed. Um, and all that. Anyway, guys, have a great day and a great weekend. See you later. Peace.